Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. Welcome to my super secret files. These aren't actually that secret, they're accessible to everybody because we're going to be deep diving into the ISO that Gremlin were using at the European Trade Show back in 1998. The ISO itself contains a whole bunch of uh, content for the games that were being made at that time and hogs happen to be one of them. This is actually freely accessible to everybody so if you want to check it out yourself the link to the ISO will be in the description. It was on the uh, Gremlins archive page uh, but the European trade show actually preceded the likes of E3 so E3 started in 1995 the European trade show was started in 1988 and it ran until 2004 but obviously nowadays we still have the likes of E3 so we're going to start with the movies because in here we have two for the PC and the PlayStation we'll start with the PlayStation one because that one is less interesting shall we say So as many of you will have seen uh, before from my previous videos, this is uh, the earliest uh, PlayStation version of Hogs of War and it was the scary clunky phase uh, where the pigs looked terrifying and the game wasn't really functional, like there was some basic implementation with certain weapons you could move around, the basic features were there but gameplay just didn't exist. Now if we go ahead and take a look at the PC version, things get a little bit more spicy. So first off for both uh, videos, the soundtrack is just beautiful, but the PC version here is way more interesting because as you can see, we're given so much more detail as to what you can expect, I guess, um, from the game itself. That and the fact that the tone of certain levels is way more noticeable compared to the PlayStation version. So to break it down from the beginning, uh, we sort of pan into uh, an opening shot, not entirely sure what that map is, but then you can see here that uh, the sort of weather has already been implemented here. There's some kind of fog uh, which is used throughout most of the levels. Then we get an overview here of this is uh, Mission 9, it's an old version of the village people. You can see over here this is sort of the top part where normally there'd be a bridge over here uh, that you'd have to run across the like minefield where the buildings are is over here and the water is over here. That's not the case in this version because it is an earlier version, but seeing the 3D space is, is pretty cool. Getting an overview, this of course being Mission 5, you've got the different style bridges here. The PC obviously had more of a poly count to play with, so they added a little bit more detail into uh, the bridges, which you'll see uh, in a little bit more detail in a moment. And then this final third sort of uh, pan across another 3D space. Uh, that is uh, the map known as uh, Glass City. It may just look like a bunch of uh, jumbled white and blue mess, but this is actually a map that I used in Pins Mod, I think version 3. Uh, but you can see here along the outer edges, the texturing isn't exactly perfect. Uh, there's some kind of building here, uh, but you have like the pathways mixed in with the ice. Uh, don't really get to see it for very long because it transitions into the next shot very quickly. Uh, so this might be an older version. Uh, of that map. But anyway, we then come to uh, this was a kind of a test map that was used. It's called Tears, uh, and you can see that we have the regular uh, flying vehicles. There's a, a building here that I haven't properly seen before, at least not in uh, the copies of the game that I have, but I believe that is an old version of the shelter. Then we have another pan across here onto, I think this is uh, the map known as Tanks. Uh, you don't really get to see it, but uh, as he then pans across, there's just tons of destroyed buildings in the background. The tone here is really nice as well, kind of that orange hue almost. And then we get another shot here of... Uh, the, the Hogs in its early days had about three maps that were kind of the same. There was the unused map known as Mines, which we've been over before. There's another one called Sub-T, which was kind of like subterranean 
uh, type map and in this case it has lava uh, on the bottom and a bunch of bridges which you'll see here with a better shot there's a ton of bridges and platforms that you'd stand on none of them would move of course but there's also pillboxes dotted about as well and then you get a better shot from below here with the pig moving up um, and a shot of a building here as well it just it happens so quickly but this map is uh, called Bond which was another map that was very much like Mines and Sub T uh, in that it was a uh, kind of a very enclosed map that just sort of chucked buildings here and there this is an updated version of Mines you can see you've got the big building here that you could go into more bridges across the uh, sides to connect everything together another shot of the map known as Tears and then that is all of the videos so with the video content out of the way, we can then take a, a closer look at the screenshots. I'm going to leave the press document because I'm going to go into detail about that in another video uh, that will give a bit more context to the origins of Hogs of War. Um, but for now, if we go onto the PlayStation ones, you can see all these images are the, the, the things you've seen before in past videos, right? I mean, the, there's nothing new. This is mines, like I said, the bridges, the buildings there. Uh, this is uh, Mission 13's map. Um, Normally over here you'd have like the metal in the corner, but instead you have this big building and a checkpoint and a gate all the way around it, but you can walk through all of it, there's no collision or anything. And then this is the map known as Tears that I was telling you about. Um, I have a, a big building here, a couple of watchtowers, a whole bunch of pillboxes, um, but no real context to what this map was essentially. I, I put it down to being a tester map because it just has a bunch of random stuff in it that doesn't really correlate to being a mission map or anything like that uh, but this is an early version of Oasis with the early tents in there uh, and this is a map called Gauntlet which contained a whole bunch of old uh, destroyed buildings there's a, a little fence post there as well uh, and some farmland as well but that's it for the PlayStation version the PC version shows off a little bit more detail with that sort of like foggy uh, skybox uh, this is uh, another one called uh, Tanks, which I mentioned previously. They did enjoy their destroyed buildings in the early versions of Hogs. You can see here a, a slightly closer view of Mission 5 with the uh, the updated bridges. Uh, there's, I think, a destroyed... I think that's some kind of destroyed checkpoint. I'm not entirely sure, but there's some uh, sandbags there as well. Just a close look at the scary little pig here on uh, Tanks again. Just a slightly different angle. Lots of destroyed buildings. Uh, this guy looks like he's got a pole coming out of his head, so that, that's that's got to be painful. But this is the map known as Island, which is another one that I used in Pins Mod version 4, I believe. Slightly different viewpoint of the map Oasis, which is mission 12. Uh, again, the tents actually looking like tents before they became the sort of rectangular monstrosities that we have in the final game. Another view of Mission 13's map, slightly updated this time because alongside this building you have another one here, you have uh, another shelter here, and uh, just generally higher poly count. So, I mean, the pig model looks a bit better besides the massive stretched backpack or whatever that is. And then here on Tears again, we have a better view of the uh, old shelter, lots of sandbags, but pigs could walk into here, uh, move around, and they could shoot from here as well. So it was a complete... Uh, 3D space, you didn't just jump into it and that was that. So I'm kind of saving the coolest part for last, which is the concepts folder. So in here we have some uh, artwork that I've never seen before and some 3D screenshots of stuff that we've only ever seen in super low res. So as you can see here, we've got the artwork that we've seen before, including the poster, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this is kind of where the nightmare fuel comes in, <laughs> because if I open up bedroom, uh, yeah, this is Albert's room, uh, but we can actually see it in more detail uh, considering that the final cutscene was so uh, so compressed. You, you lost so much detail, but that is absolute nightmare fuel for just everybody, right? But it does make you appreciate the amount of detail that they put into the scenes. You can see here just the, the 3D render, uh, the detail on the books, on the poster, on the bedding on the football in the corner, there's newspaper on the ground, there's, I guess, clothes, there's a cricket bat in the background, uh, and there's even, like, if you can just see, there's, like, a picture of an old, just an old sort of antique photo 
picture painting, not entirely sure. And of course she's T-posing, so that, that's always funny. And the caption is uh, quite something. Uh, but they, these I just found to be so interesting, and they get more interesting in a second because they just revealed stuff that I wasn't able to see in such clear detail. So sticking with the 3D renders here, we have a T-posing Albert who's ready to go into this building and speak to the sergeant. Uh, but we can see all of the detail that was lost in uh, the final compressed video. Uh, but even the little details here of Corkscrew Parade, I think that was changed or uh, part of it was changed to uh, Pork Walk or something like that uh, in the final cutscene. But just the detail around the door, the sign there as well, the uh, hogs like little logo, you can see it there too. And the drain pipe, I just I have a lot of appreciation for the level of detail put into the scene, including the posters in the background, which we've already seen this one. There's a wanted poster for like a Red Baron uh, pig here. There's a public notice and you can kind of see some kind of buildings here too. Just those little niche details that were always great. And who doesn't enjoy uh, a T-posing Albert? I'm sure we can make that some kind of uh, emote or something uh, or emoji in the Hogs Discord. I'm sure someone's gonna cut it out and put it in as soon as this video is up and ready. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. So next up we have the absolutely terrifying 3D renders of the pig models that were shown in the cinema like film uh, that Albert watches during the cutscene. So you can see here there's a fully built 3D model of a tank which is used in that cutscene. Uh, and this is not too far away from the old uh, design of the tank that was used in the oldest version of Hogs back in 1998. But as far as the pig model goes, like I said, he is just a tad bit terrifying. His eyes have seen some stuff, man. He has, <laughs> he has seen some stuff. But because these models were used uh, in the film, there was a lot of effects put over the top. So the landscape and the skybox. I mean, the skybox is pretty nice, but there's not much detail needed. Uh, around the simple landscape because eventually the tank uh, you can see the pig inside it in the cutscene video the tank is moving uh, but it's when we go to the next uh, image here you can see that there is plenty of detail we get a more detailed look at the pig model who looks like he's got a, a lamppost on his head yeah German cunt what's he doing with a fucking lamppost on his head um, he's obviously a German pig he's got some detail with the bottles connected to his belt and stuff but like I said, generally just terrifying. And I love the little details here that we have with the to the front line. The mud texture is really nice. Uh, and like I said, I just have a lot of appreciation for the amount of detail that was put into these cutscenes. And last but not least, we have this piece of artwork here, uh, which many of you will recognize this pig over here and this pig over here. They stand together in the uh, poster, but you can see that this is the original color palette that they went with. So this guy has a nice red jacket, and then we have these two that are facing off or trying to be friends. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, but an another German pig here uh, just chilling with his homie. So yeah, some cool artwork. Uh, like I said, you should uh, definitely check out the ISO, check out the other games that were being worked on and the content for those in that ISO. I'd recommend downloading Ultra ISO, which is a little piece of software that allows you to open up bin files and look inside them and extract things from them, which is what I did to extract all of this content for you guys today. But let me know what was your favorite part. Uh, what you want to see more of or what you wish uh, could have been in the game in some way. Uh, whether it be the details that we've looked at from the old version of Hogs or just anything else in between, let me know as always and we'll make Albert the T-posing the pig an emote that you can have in the Hogs Discord. But in the meantime, that's everything from me and I will catch you all later for the next one. Peace out, everybody. Right, you putrid porker. You should be proud of your Hogs. I've given you, um, ooh, um, do -do -do -do. Five additional promotion points to decorate them with. Are you listening to a word I say? 
Repeat after me. Minefields are very bad things to wander into. Now, press your button and we will be the richest nation in the world. Just imagine, just imagine limitless swill supplies until the end of all time. Oh, God, don't mess it up. <laughs>